Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular tutorial, we are going to talk about NAT, uh, specifically the differences between NAT instance and NAT gateway. Now, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you have already seen the video on VPC, which is there on the channel, and you understand that what a VPC is, uh, how to go ahead and make public and private subnets. Uh, the usage of NAT comes into picture when you want to enable your private instances, the instances which do not have public IP and they are there in the private subnets. When you want to enable internet access for these private instances, that is when you go ahead and use NAT. Now there are two options for NAT. You can go ahead and use a NAT instance, which is more like uh, you know, standing up or creating another EC2 instance from a specific AMI which AWS provides you. So you go ahead and create that instance and that instance works as the NAT instance for you. I hope you remember, I will also leave in the description a link which gives you step by step uh, all the instructions how to create a NAT instance. When you create a NAT instance, uh, you also need to disable source destination check for that particular EC2 instance. Now earlier, that's how we were doing and then later on NAT Gateway came into picture. NAT Gateway was launched so that customers do not have to go ahead and worry about, uh, about their NAT instance going down or also they don't have to worry about you know, the whole scalability piece uh, or a scalability aspect of their NAT instance. Rather, all of these things are taken care by default. So you can, now it's possible that you can go ahead and of course use NAT gateway and hence you do not need to worry about the scalability of your NAT. You don't have to worry about your NAT going down, okay? Now, uh, even uh, with these things, sometimes still people remain confused or they are not clear that what are the differences between the two. So I just thought of pointing out few important differences between the two here. It is well given on the AWS website, so you can go ahead and read it as well later on. But in this quick video, I'll just try to explain you that, okay? So I'll try to talk about some of the important ones as you can see on the screen. So first one is availability. So we already talked that NAT gateway is highly available. But if you remember, when we create a NAT gateway, we go ahead and choose a subnet. So, so we choose a subnet in which we want to keep our NAT gateway. Of course, we should always choose a public subnet. But if you remember, every subnet maps to one availability zone, right? And if we follow the principle of high availability, which we have you know, discussed many times earlier, we should have any infrastructure piece running in at least two availability zones. So for your production scenarios or uh, you know, um, for if, you're, if you are setting up the infrastructure for the prod environment, it would, be, it would be advisable that you create one NAT gateway per availability zone, okay? So try to think of the example which we have taken earlier in our VPC video. If you have not seen the VPC video, I'll put uh, a link in the description. So if, we, if you go ahead and look at the VPC video, what we have done is we have created a VPC and we have created four subnets within that, two public and two private, and we have kept one public and one private subnet in availability zone A, one public and one private subnet in availability zone B. Okay, so the idea is that if if I go ahead and create a NAT gateway, or I will not say a NAT gateway, when I am going ahead and creating NAT gateways, I should create one, one NAT gateway in public subnet which is there in availability zone A, and I should create one NAT gateway which is there, which should be there in the public subnet which is there in availability zone B, okay? So what would happen with this? If in case a complete availability zone goes down, let's say availability zone A goes down, even then my application would continue to work because I have a NAT gateway running in the availability zone B as well, okay? So what you need to understand is that yes, uh, NAT gateway is highly available. You don't have to worry about it going down because internally it will take care. But let's say the availability zone in which the NAT gateway exists, if that availability zone itself goes down, then there is a problem. And that's why it is being stressed that you should launch NAT gateways in 
all the availability zones at least i mean you have to launch one nat gateway in all the availability zones okay uh, in case of nat instance all the time you have to take care of your instance going down it is your responsibility whether you choose to maybe use auto scaling and put min and max both as one or some other mechanism you can write a script which gets triggered if the nat instance goes down it launches another instance and things like that it's totally customer's responsibility in terms of bandwidth uh, when you are using nat gateway it can go ahead and give you up to 45 gbps gan you know bandwidth so which means uh, your application might be sending or taking a lot of tra or you know receiving back a lot of traffic from internet you don't have to worry your nat gateway will scale automatically that's the good thing but in case of nat instance you will have to choose the instance type accordingly and all of you already know that in case of ec2 instance uh, in order to do vertical scaling for example if you create a nat instance uh, let's say of m4 to x large size after a while you realize that no this is not giving you enough bandwidth right so what you'll have to do you if you want to change it to let's say m4 4x large you need to stop this instance change instance type and then start it again so the vertical scaling always involves a stop and start so you have to keep that in mind as as we were moving forward you will realize that nat gateway would be the best option for you to go ahead and use in the prod prod environments whereas in case of whereas you can go ahead and use nat instance for your dev and test environments okay so this will become more clear as we are looking at more differences in terms of maintenance of course you don't have to do anything in case of nat gateway in case of nat instance it's all customers responsibility you have to take care of you know applying any os updates patches everything is your responsibility in terms of performance uh, this one nat gateway is optimized to do this work whereas uh, in case of nat instance it is again an amazon linux ami which has been configured to work as nat but whether it is uh, it is it is the most optimum that's not necessarily true one more thing in case of nat gateway you cannot go ahead and log in you cannot go ahead and do ssh right to this particular instance you cannot go ahead and change inside anything whereas it is possible that in nat gateway you can go ahead and do ssh to that instance and change something at os level all right next is cost this one is important the, there is no shutdown or turn off in case of nat gateway when you go ahead and create a nat gateway as soon as it becomes active its billing starts and the billing would depend on two factors that the, for the amount of time for which it was running which means from the time it got created till the time you go ahead and delete it so that complete duration and the amount of data which passes through your nat gateway right so if your application is is you know sending a lot of data to internet or you know getting a lot of data from internet it will you know that amount of data also will be an important factor in the overall cost okay whereas in case of nat instance you are going to pay for the ec2 instance charge depending on what instance type you have chosen and in addition to that the data transfer charges was, would also be involved if you want to look at the data transfer charges you can go ahead to the ec2 pricing page and you can look at data transfer charges okay the cost how does it work so all the data into the cloud from internet when it is coming into the cloud it is going to be free but any data which goes out from the cloud to internet you get charged for it type and size here you don't have to choose you would have seen in the demo when we create a nat gateway we do not choose any size or anything because it scales automatically you just go ahead and create the nat gateway and then based on the load which comes on the nat gateway it will expand automatically so you don't have to worry about it whereas in case of nat instance we already discussed that you need to choose the size and you need to take care of scalability as well in terms of public ip address requirements in case of uh, nat gateway it is important that you go ahead and associate one elastic ip for sure okay whereas in case of nat instance it is not necessary uh, that you that you always give elastic ip it may work with just a normal public ip as well in terms of private ip uh, you know uh, depending on the subnet which you choose when you are creating the nat gateway one private ip or one or more will get allocated as per the requirement of the size of nat gateway private ips will get consumed from that particular subnet where you have kept your nat gateway whereas on the right hand side in case of nat instance 
only one private ip will go because you know when because when you are launching it it is just like launching another ec2 instance so you get option to even specify the private ip if you want right so but the idea is because it is one instance so only one private ip will go whereas in case of nat gateway as it expands more and more private ips will get consumed from your subnet all right moving forward one two more things in case of security groups uh, you would have seen you don't have to specify any security group in case of NAT gateway. It's plain simple, no security groups at all. All, you know, traffic can go out on all the ports, right? For example, one of your private EC2 instance actually, uh, you know, calls, uh, calls an API, which is an external API, which is hosted on internet. Let's say it is calling it on port uh, something, 8356. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to, you know, configure it anywhere. Because there's no concept of security group with NAT gateway. On all the ports, traffic can go out. Whereas in case of NAT instance, you will have to go ahead and specify that in the security group of your NAT instance. You know, the ports on which you are sending out the traffic and then you are receiving it back, you'll have to configure the security group of your NAT instance accordingly. Okay, last is network ACL. Well, network ACL will apply to both of them because uh, as you know, even NAT gateway resides within a subnet. And you know that network ACLs on uh, you know network ACLs get applied at the subnet level. So network ACLs apply to both of them. So just go ahead and see. Normally we do not change much in case of network ACLs unless until we want to specify explicitly deny certain IP ranges. You know, in case of inbound, then only we go ahead and do the um, we have, we go ahead and you know add deny rules in case of network ACL. Flow logs, you can go ahead and enable flow log for both of them. Port forwarding is not supported, uh, meaning you can uh, like you cannot use it as a you know as a as a reverse proxy. You cannot use it. Whereas in case of uh, this thing in NAT instance, because you get access to the to the EC2 instance, you can go to the operating system level. You can set up port forwarding if you want. Okay, uh, that same way the second point is also there. You can also go ahead and use it as a as a bastion server or as a jump box. Meaning, because your NAT instance will be there in the public subnet. So from outside, you can come to the public, uh, you can come to the this particular instance because it is there in the public subnet. Then from there, you can go ahead and SSH to any of the private instances. So NAT instance can also be used as a bastion server or jump box. Whereas NAT gateway, we have already discussed, you cannot do SSH to it. So you cannot use it. I hope uh, uh, some of these things, uh, uh, you know, would have helped you. Uh, it is important to understand the difference between two. Uh, most of the times people are using NAT gateway these days because there is no management overhead in case of NAT gateway. But it is important for uh, for us to understand, just to summarize, that in, your, in case of your prod scenarios, have one NAT gateway per availability zone within your VPC. And for your dev and test scenarios, it is it is it is it would make sense that you go ahead and use nat instance and hence you can save money what you can do is when when you are shutting down your complete dev and test environment you can shut down your nat instance as well and hence you are not getting charged for it whereas in case of nat gateway from the time it gets created its billing starts till the time you go ahead and delete that nat gateway so i hope this video has been uh, you know practical some of the points were discussed uh, there are a lot more such videos on our channel youtube.com slash knowledge india please go ahead visit it and see look at the playlist if you like this video you understood what we have talked about please go ahead and share it with at least one or two of your friends like the video and look for more thank you bye bye take care